Welcome back to the Bordreau Podcast. My name is Kyle. As always, I'm your host and my co-host with me, Matt Dixon. Um, just letting you know, we have a special episode tonight. Uh, if you are one of our listeners that's outside the state of Florida, kind of bear with us because um, we are meeting with the uh, representative from the Florida Coaches Coalition uh, tonight. Basically, uh, our mission statement, as always, is to help high school coaches in the state of Florida and around the country. And we have a particular issue here in the state of Florida, and it's coaches' pay. So tonight, uh, we have a representative, that's Dr. Andrew Ramjet, and we're going to talk to him uh, about all the issues going on and see if we got a solution that's hopefully on the horizon. Matt, I know you got a couple comments on this early on. Yeah, absolutely. And Coach, I, I hope that even if people are outside the state of Florida, they can take something from this. And I know there's other states that are underpaid as well. So hopefully they can learn something from this and see the action that's being taken in the state of Florida. I myself as a former head coach here in the state of Florida, this is, this has been needed. This has, it's gross what is done to coaches as far as coaching pay and compensation. And it's something that needs to be handled quickly We've seen a plethora of talent leaving the state of Florida as far as coaches, and uh, we need to put a fix to that and uh, stop the bleeding from within. Yeah, no doubt. And just like Matt said, we're, we're two former coaches from this state, so no one knows this, uh, this mission better than us. Um, but we didn't take up the torch, but our guest tonight did, and we're happy to join him in his mission. So, um, you know, Andrew, go ahead and tell us about the Florida Coaches Coalition kind of what your mission statement, your goals are, and, and mainly why you care. You know, why, why did you take this upon yourself and in your organization? Well, Kyle, Matt, thank you very much for having me on tonight. Very much appreciated. You know, I, the more people that, you know, know about the cause, that know about the, the lack of compensation for coaches in Florida, I think the better it is. And it actually helps the cause of what we're doing. Uh, we were founded December 2021. Uh, at that time, I was the county athletic director in Brevard County. And in the span of a week, we lost four coaches, two of whom, uh, two of whom decided to go out of state. And uh, they were great coaches as well. And just what they did for the community and all that kind of stuff in Brevard was great. And just to lose those coaches was just a big hit. And when I spoke to them individually, they told me that it all came down to compensation. Right. And um, I, I was upset at that point. And, you know, I had been in the job a little less than a year. And uh, one of the main reasons for taking the job was to try to fight for coaches pay. So I created a Twitter account and it only had one follower, which was my personal account. And <laughs> I made a post right before we were the Florida Coaches Coalition. Uh, we were the Florida Coalition for Higher Coaching Salaries. And I made a long post about enough is enough. It's time for us to stand up. And I liked it from my personal account. I shared it. And within two weeks, we had over 500,000 views. We had college coaches, high school coaches just liking this thing. And this thing just blew up, went viral. Um, from there, you know, we've been building the coalition from that point. We're up now to 13,000 coaches. Uh, mainly football coaches, but our membership ranges from basketball, baseball. You have lacrosse and bowling coaches, other niche sports in the state, water polo, because they believe, you know, the coaches believe in what we're doing and we're actually getting results in, in you know, our approach. You know, I, I, I have before I, I get into, um, you know, my personal journey. Funny story, you know, uh, when we came out and we were putting out our, our stuff on social media, I had a coach in North Florida reach out to me. He's like, you guys are doing this the wrong way. You know, if you want to go about doing this, you need to do this. You need to do that. I said, well, coach, with all due respect, how long have you been coaching in the state? I've been a head coach for 25 years. Well, coach, what have you done in those 25 years to better the compensation in the profession? It's true. He ate crow on that one. Right afterwards, he said, you know what? You're right. <laughs> I, I don't have any grounds here to say anything. Yep. <laughs> so our approach is very much in your face. And, you know, we, we really speak on facts. You know, I'm a big data guy. You know, I'm outside of coaching. You know, I got a doctorate in education. So I'm, I'm, I'm very big on data. So a lot of what we do is data driven. Right. Um, you know, back back to me a little bit. You know, I started 
coaching in the state right out of college um, down in South Florida, Parkway Academy, the 2011-2012 school year. I took an assistant coaching job under Anthony Harris. Uh, he was a former Dolphins linebacker. He loves to tell everyone at the time he was the third leading tackler in Auburn history. I, I think he's you know somewhere down that line now. He's not number three anymore, but I remember getting my first paycheck, man, and two weeks as an assistant coach after taxes, it was $112 and some cents. (laughs) I said, what the hell is this? You know, and from that point on, it was kind of like, let me to find some more information about this because this isn't right. All the hours that I was putting in as an assistant, you know, reviewing film, drawing up game plans, it, 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 it was crazy. It was mind boggling to me, but at the same time, it was my first year in education. So I coached another few years in Broward and then moved into the school administration route. Uh, moved out to Orlando 2018, went back into the classroom, and uh, I got onto the staff at Cypress Creek High School following year uh, on the Lake Nona staff with Anthony Paradiso. And during COVID, there was an opening for a county AD position in Brevard. I said, well, shit, it's an hour away, but you know what? Let me apply anyways, because somebody has to do something because I spoke to so many athletic directors during that time and everybody kind of gave up on it. And they essentially told me it is what it is. You know, that's Florida. And that never sat right with me. So did the interview and, and got the job. I think it was more because of my doctorate than my coaching acumen, because I'll be the first one to tell you, wasn't the biggest X's and O's guy in the world, but I think they liked the administrative side of what I did. And, you know, I got the job in Brevard April 2020 and immediately hit the ground running and, you know, uh, did some good stuff in Brevard. Our coaches in Brevard got a 25% bonus, right, on, on their supplement. Um, because one thing you find out dealing with teacher unions and school districts is they don't want to put it in to make it permanent, right? They, they always yeah. claim that they don't have enough money to do certain things. Um, so we were able to get, you know, that nice 25% bonus for the coaches in Brevard. And, you know, a lot of the, the experience I've had in Brevard, uh, the, a lot of the experiences I've had in administration kind of led us to where we are with the coalition and just our whole approach. Yeah, that's uh, s- such a good background story, you know, coming from a guy who was a former coach, was a county AD, all these things. So, that makes perfect sense. Um, Matt, would you want to take this one right here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Coach, I saw your recent proposal on Twitter. I think that kind of got shared around pretty quickly over the last you know week. I've seen that keep popping up, popping up. Um, and the one thing that stuck out and really resonated with me was the fact that you're just asking for coaches to be paid minimum wage in the state. Um, what was the, the thought process? Can you kind of tell us the thought process by asking for just at least minimum wage? Yeah, I think, you know, by asking for minimum wage, what you're doing there, you have a lot of coaches that always say, well, you know what? In Texas, they're making six figures. Georgia, they're close to making six figures. We need to have that in Florida. Well, I think what draws more eyes to the cause right away is, Coaches in Florida are not even making minimum wage. You know, (laughs) we were up in Tallahassee a few weeks ago, and I had John Peacock, the head coach at Venice High School out there with me. And Coach Peacock said that, well, he accounted for every hour that he put in, and it came out to a a little under 1,200 hours. Well, I did the math. Coach, your supplement's $3,700 before tax. After taxes, 1,200 hours, you're making a little over two bucks an hour for what you do. And Venice, we all know Venice is one of the top programs in the state. They're producing collegiate talent every year. So if you have a coach of that caliber making $2 an hour, I mean, I think you hit the point by saying, shit, get us to minimum wage. Why can't we be at minimum wage? Why is it that coaches in the coaching profession in high schools aren't making minimum wage? And the feedback that we've gotten has been incredible because – You have so many families out there, not just coaches. You have so many parents out there of players saying, wait, hold on. You guys don't make minimum wage? No, we don't. You know, so it it really, you know, hits a point. And then also, you know, the throwing that minimum wage thing out there. You know, when we met with the the state legislature, 
Um, you know, as you know, we have a huge problem in Florida with teaching vacancies. So to coach in Florida, you can't immediately remove coaches from the classroom because we are already at a vacancy, you know, at a very yeah. large amount of vacancies. So put together the teaching salary, whatever it is, add in a supplement of minimum wage. And, you know, I had it there, you know, a head football coach making the bare minimum, like a first year teacher plus your head football coach supplement, you're going to be at 70 grand. So it's just opening eyes, you know, more than anything else with the proposal. Absolutely. And you started to talk about the legislature. What do you think are current barriers we have in our way um, as regards to increasing that compensation? Well, the current barriers we have right now, um, and, you know, we, we got the meeting set up with the Florida Education Association. They're the kind of master teacher union in, in the state. Um, but I think the biggest barrier is teacher unions in the state, right? They're fighting for salary for teachers. So what does it say about giving coaches money, more money, when you can't give the teachers more money? So I, I think that leads to a big issue. And then there was also Title IX concerns. Uh, Senator Corey Simon, he played for Coach Bowden out there at Florida State, went on oh, with yeah. the Super Bowl. Um, I, I believe uh, it wasn't with the Eagles, but he won a, a Super Bowl. could have been the Colts. But uh, Corey Simon mm -hmm. said, well, you know, we have to think about Title IX, you know, because Title IX ha has grown, you know, exponentially in, in you know, education in general. So the proposal meets Title IX requirements. As you can see, um, baseball coaches, softball coaches paid the same. Basketball coaches, boys and girls paid the same. It, it I think, is a foolproof plan to make sure our coaches get paid. But the, the biggest barrier is going to be teacher unions. And, you know, one thing, you know, when we put this out, you know, I had a lot of teachers slide into the DMs just ba basically saying, well, <laughs> we need to pay teachers first. No, we don't. If, you know, being in those back rooms for negotiations for coaches back when I was in Brevard, you, you, the teacher unions, they fight for teachers. You know, somehow coaches got stuck under the bargaining agreement for teacher unions and any penny that's available, they're fighting for teachers, which they should. But coaches are at the bottom of the totem pole. They're fighting for for pennies alongside band directors and chorus instructors. Like, no, like the amount of work that goes into coaching, it's not just, you know, just taking an after school supplement. It, coaching is a profession. Go ask yeah. Nick Saban. Go ask Mike Norvell, who was at the state legislature meeting, what it takes to be a successful coach. It's not just grabbing your math teacher and putting a warm body in a position. That's not going to work. You Coaching is a profession that takes time to master. Absolutely. And you said something that really just kind of set a light bulb off in my head. It's almost like we've been told – it's just a stipend. You take the stipend, that is what it is, and you move along about your day. You know, I took this year an after school program where I work two days a week for one and a half hours, and I'll make more than any assistant football coach on, on staff at our school, um, just helping out with math after school. And, and that's like a, a low level program. And um, it's just incredible to me in my mind that I can go do something like that instead and increase my compensation. Um, you know, you, we talked real quick about legislative, is there any legislative or policy changes, um, that you guys are actively pursuing, um, with the state? Yeah. So what we're trying to do right now is make sure that there are minimum hours required for coaching supplements. So right now there, there is no set standard, right? So Alachua County, for example, they only allow a lot. 244 hours for a head football coach. So they pay them based on 244 hours. Like, that's get insane. out of here. 244 hours? Like, that's, a, that's a couple weeks. <laughs> that's three that's weeks. A, that's a it's, gross misunderstanding of what is going on at your school. It's, you know, and, and this supplement, you know, program that school districts implemented, it was implemented in the late 70s, right? And it's outdated. It's almost 50 years old. 
high school athletics has grown to a point now where, I mean, you can't be hired for a coaching position. You can't walk into a head football coach interview and say, Hey, you know what? I'm just going to coach for the fall and I'm going <laughs> to take the spring off. I'm going to take summer conditioning off. You won't even be given a look for the job, right? I mean, the hours that go into coaching, especially coaching football. I mean, we took a poll of coaches throughout the state and we've been accumulating data for the last two years and it ranges anywhere the lowest that I've seen from a head coach was 1,080 hours, and the most that I've seen was 2,400 yeah. hours, right? So it 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 really, you know, to, like Alachua County to say coaches are only allotted 244 hours, that's only a fifth of the lowest amount that we received in our, yeah. in our polls, which is, which is absolutely ridiculous. No, it's, it's just like you say um... – you know, I, I've had a couple of head coaching interviews. I was a head coach for a year. Matt's done it. And I talk with a lot of coaches that are going into head coaching interviews. And when we lay out the materials for a head coaching interview, right, we're building 12 month schedules. We're talking about equipment ordering. We're talking about all these different things that coaches do. And I, now I laughed at what you said. How nice would it be to be like, Oh, summer sketch. No, we take the summer off. We're good. We're just going to coach in the fall and we'll do a, three weeks in the spring and we're done. I mean, right. That that'd be the easiest interview ever. But like you said, you're not getting a job if that's how you go into the interview. So that's pretty wild. Um, Absolutely, man. And you, you know, the one thing, and maybe we <coughs> could touch on this a little more is, you know, what, what these school districts don't take into account is coaches are putting in so much time unpaid to make sure that these kids are successful, that it takes a toll on their family life. It takes yes. a toll on their mental health. Those are the things that are never talked about. And with the coalition, those are things that we focus on too getting coaches free mental health resources, getting them, you know, family counseling, whatever it is, that that's what we're here to do for coaches. But I mean, if you, you know, if we joke around about it, you know, a lot of coaches are divorced. People don't realize that, you know, and the reason that they're divorced and they've lost their families is because they love what they do. They love their profession and the amount of time it takes them away from their families is ridiculous. Like me, the, the, you know, the reason that I got out, you know, it, it was starting to cause some issues in the marriage and I have three little kids, right? At the yeah. time I had three kids under the age of five. So it, it, it's kind of, you know, one of those things where you kind of have to draw the line. Do, am I picking my family or am I picking my profession? Yeah. And just like you said, much like teachers, we also spend money on our players. Uh, there's not a coach I, I don't, that I haven't met that hasn't bought PB and J's or, you know, brought some extra food in or do something like that. So it's, it's so much more than just the time we spent there. It's all the investment that we sink in there. How about uh, driving kids home after practice because the parents can't pick their kids up. Oh yeah. Come on, you know, I was just having a conversation with my neighbor about having to take, you know, players home after practice because their parents weren't around and I wasn't waiting at school until 10 o'clock at night because I had Correct. to get home to my family. So you know what? <laughs> Everybody hop in the minivan. Yeah, no, it's coach. It's it, there's so much in there. Um, so I want to pivot here a little bit. I, when we went over and we remember a couple years back, there was this big push for the refs to get pay raises. And the one thing I remembered was the FHSAA backing these refs to get a pay raise do we see any of that? And I really haven't noticed the FHSA really entering any kind of a role with coaches pay raises. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's an, a, you know, an issue that they just want to wipe their hands clean of, you know, when it came to the officials, they stood up for officials. And I remember this was December of 2022. And this was the state high school championship game. It was Coco high school was out there. So I was out there for the County and, Craig Damon was on the sidelines and I was chopping it up with Craig. And, you know, I said, Craig, you know, what are we going to do about coaching salaries? You know, what are you guys going to do? He's like, what can we do? We can make a statement, but that's not going to change anything. And I love Craig, love what he's done, you know, except for these, you know, last few weeks with the football classifications. <laughs> but if you're in that position, you have that platform, you need to make a statement. Yeah. It goes a long way with coaches and it goes a long way with people that you may not even think are watching. 
So if you have that platform, you need to make a statement. Yeah, no, I we're with you. And that was the one thing I noticed. I said, you know, um, people tweet about it all the time. They say, what about the FHSA? And we know the Florida high school football Twitter always says, well, they don't have anything to do with this. And, and a lot of people I would, you know, I'd look through the comments and a lot of people are always like, but they had something to say about the refs getting a raise. So why wouldn't they have something to say about this? So I, I agree with and, that. And, you know, I was, I was probably the first one to call them out on it. And, you know, and with the coalition, we made a post, you know, that, that I created that said, what would happen if coaches decide one day to strike and not participate in, you know, any FHSA sanctioned sport? What would happen then? You know, are they going to make a statement? Like, what would they do in that situation? You know, what would schools do in that situation if coaches banded together and said, you know what, we're tired of this crap. We're not coaching anymore. But yeah. <laughs> the thing here is, you know, with Texas, you know, a lot of what we've done in with the coalition is based on the Texas High School Coaches Association. THSCA, right? it's a great organization. Dude, coaches are required to join. Like coaches, that's like a full-fledged union for coaches practically. I mean, why can't we have that in Florida? And a lot of it goes back to the history of things here. You know, FACA, when they were created, they, they you know, none of this was an issue. And, you know, part of what led to our creation, even when I was a coach, I, you know, was a member of the FACA. You know, the school paid my dues. All I got in the mail was a liability card. <laughs> yep. I never got a single email. Coaching this state for almost 10 years, I never got a single email from the FACA. Not saying anything bad about them, but if you're the coaches association of the state, you would think that you would make a statement on this. You would think you would come forward and fight for the coaches. And that didn't happen. So I said, you know what, I'm tired of this. And, you know, coalition got started. Yeah, no. And, you know, I, I've had a unique perspective. I, I got to go to the THSCA coaching school a couple of years when I worked for Huddle. Um, nice. So it's a big convention. It's like AFCA. It's actually bigger than AFCA because it's all the Texas high school coaches. It is a massive convention. All the coaches go there because they're a member of the THSCA, so they get admission. There's a bunch of vendors there. There's all these different things there, teaching sessions, everything. There are sessions for their wives. There are sessions for the kids. Yep. Everything there. It's such this fantastic organization. And I've always said, why can't we have that in Florida? Why can't once or twice a year we have this huge convention that everybody goes to? And people are always like, well, the FACA does it. No one goes. And I'm like, no, I understand, but it's the chicken or the egg, right? Does the convention need to be bigger? Probably. But also, does there need to be more members? Yes. But that's what I'm with you on that is like, we, we need to grow that one way or another, whether it's through the FACA or a new version of it. One thing that's disappointing about just the coaching fraternity in itself in Florida is there's a lack of unity that exists. Yeah. Right. There is a lack of unity between your football coaches, your basketball coaches. Like it's become so divisive. Right. And outside of being divisive, it's it, it it's to the point where the turnover has become so high. You know, the average coach is only in their position for a little over a year now, right? With the data that we have, it's 1.2 years. With that kind of turnover, you can't build any form of unity. You can't yeah. build what Texas has. And, you know, part of raising those supplements is it'll build. You, you'll have coaches staying in those positions, just taking more, take just just taking more, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, just taking more. I don't want to say gratitude in the profession, but they're they're, mm-hmm. but they'll be around longer, and yeah. you know, by being around longer, you're you're going to be more involved with things, right? Yeah, coach. I, we've seen this, and we talk about it. We've seen many head coaches in the state leave to become assistant coaches in other states, and it's a pay raise. Not just a coordinator in another state but a position coach. So from head coach to position coach and still get a $15,000 raise or $20,000 raise. It's wild. And I can't get mad at any of those coaches because look, I had to leave the profession because of money. I can't look at a coach and make shame on you for going to Georgia to take care of your family. Like who, you know what I'm saying? So I I'm with you. I believe this kind of starts from, from ourselves. So speaking of that word that I was looking for, coaches would take more ownership of the profession in the state. Yeah. They would take more ownership. No, I agree. And so speaking of this fix, 
you know, a lot of people asked, and, and I have the same question, where does it start? Is it at the school level, the county level, the state level? Like, where does this, where do we have to start this? Well, unfortunately, you can't start it at the lower levels. You can't start it in the school districts. Yeah. And I saw it firsthand in Brevard because of the teacher unions, right? You, you can't, you're not going to be able to get past them, right? And then you have to go through you know, the, the labor relations of a school district, they all already have it ingrained that we're not paying coaches more money. And it's sad to say they'll give them like a little bonus, maybe like they did in Brevard because they, you know, had a penny sales surtax that was approved. So, oh, okay, coaches, we can give you a bonus of, you know, X percent. But if we're trying to make permanent change, long lasting change, the only way to do it is through the state legislature. So what we've been doing, you know, teachers are required to be in the classroom X amount of hours per school year. Coaches need to be given a minimum amount of hours that they are expected to be on the field, on the basketball court, whatever it is. There should be a minimum set number of hours for coaches. So we've been working with the state legislature and, you know, I'm I'm very optimistic. We have another meeting next Tuesday uh, and, and I'm just very optimistic with the strides that we've been able to make these last few months. And with the momentum behind us now, I really think that, you know, something's going to be get, you know, get done. And, you know, I, I know Dan LaForest, you know, let you guys in on this a little bit. But what we have yeah. planned is there's going to be a state legislative hearing at some point. And hopefully if it's before April, I'm, I'm hoping for March. We have the commitment of each of the D1 football coaches in the state, all seven of them, to be there at the legislative hearing. They've all never been in a room together before, but this is something that they believe in. And they know the impact it has on the students. They know the impact it has on their programs. They've all given their commitment to be there when that hearing happens. And when that hearing happens, it would be massive. It would be huge. Yeah. I'm talking about the ESPNs of the world now covering this and just just getting national headlines. No, and that's such a big thing. And uh, it would be cool to have all those coaches in the room. Just make sure uh, Mr. Norvell's at the head of the table there. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. So after we had the meeting in Tallahassee um, and we put up the pictures on social media and I know Coach Peacock put it up, next day I had the – director of player personnel from three of the schools reach out to me like, why didn't you <laughs> let us know? We would have been there. I was like, guys, I'm not trying to bug you guys on a random Thursday to go up to Tallahassee. You're at recruiting. Yeah. Come he's on, right there. Right. Great. So, <laughs> but so that is, so I was like, you know what, when we have this legislative hearing, we're bringing everybody in, you know, everyone will be able to give their input. And I just think that makes such a strong statement, you know, that just speaks volume. So if we're able to get that pulled off, I think it's going to be massive and you know, we're, we're moving in the right track to getting that done. Yeah, I agree. And that would be huge. Uh, so we obviously, you know, me and Matt are just two slappies with uh, podcast mics, but you know, if we can ever do anything to help out, let us know. Uh, if they'll no, let us in the Capitol building, we'll, I mean, we'll go do a live podcast. They'll let us in. I'm just kidding. They yeah, won't, but <laughs> let's do it, man. And you know, more, more so than anything else, it's about educating the general public about this because again, the, the average mom and dad, they have no idea what coaches make. And the more that they find out the information, the more, you know, families you can get on your side. I mean, the more people behind this, the faster it gets done. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a battle, you know, but I think that, you know, we are closer than we have ever been. And, you know, that that's been the goal, you know, once, you know, just we just got to get to the finish line. And I, I, I see light at the end of the tunnel. It's about just getting there. Yeah, no, and it's it's awesome that you picked up this cause. All right, so how can people that are interested in supporting this cause get involved? How can they contribute to the efforts of the Florida Coaches Coalition? Yeah, visit us on, on the web, floridacoaches.com, or on Twitter, at PayFLCoaches. Best um, Twitter no. tag ever. <laughs> yeah, pay FL coaches, right? And, and it, it's the truth. And, you know, it's crazy when we got started up. We had coaches from Utah. We had coaches from Louisiana, New Jersey, all over the country reach out to us 
asking us, how can we implement this in our state? Because a lot of other states are facing the same issue. But get this, you know, Florida now ranks 50th in all states in the United States when it comes to coaching supplements. You're telling me South Dakota, North Dakota, nothing against them. They don't have any football talent like we do. You're telling me those coaches are getting paid more money than our coaches? How is that possible? Yeah. Right? So what I told those coaches in those states is, you know, once we get what we need to get in Florida, we'll we'll help wherever we can. But, you know, again, you know, I think we're closer than when where we've ever been. And when we started this up, and I started this up December 2021, never thought we'd make so much progress so quickly. But I think this time next year, I'll be on the podcast with you guys, and this would have just been passed by the state legislature. That would be tremendous. Um, In fact, I I think we're taking that as a commitment that the first piece of media you're going to come on when it gets passed is the Board Drill podcast. So I'm just kidding. Let's do it. it. (laughs) No, we love it. Um, Look, everything that you said, we love. We're, again, we're your target demographic, even though we're not coaching now. We're huge fans of this. We will do anything we can to push it forward. So if you're out there and you're listening to this, you're seeing some of our clips on Twitter, retweet them, get it going. Make sure we we raise the awareness and we get all of this going. Um, If you have any other questions uh, for Dr. Ramjit, let us know. Um, You can email us at theboardrillpodcast at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter. Obviously, you can also reach out at Pay Florida Coaches on Twitter yourself. Uh, but if you need any help facilitating your questions, we're happy to do that for you. Uh, Matt, real quick, do you have any other parting words before we give uh, the doctor the floor? I think that coaches need to believe in this cause. Um, I think a lot of coaches kind of right now are, are just kind of wishful. That's just kind of a pipe dream that this is going to happen. And uh, I think that they need to get behind us this and uh, you know, this should be a call to action for all coaches to, to get out and spread the word and, and, and let people know exactly what's going on and, and, and how they're getting compensated. I, th- I think like doctor said, it, it, there's a lot of people that have no idea, parents, uh, players, you know, even, you know, a lot of teachers around the school don't really understand the lack of pay there for coaches comparatively to how many hours they're putting in for their profession. So I just appreciate everything you're doing. And, uh, you know, let, I, I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see this go down. No, yeah, absolutely. I, I, we're, we're big fans. No, I, I appreciate it, man. And, you know, one thing about, you know, us at the coalition, no one's making money off of this, right? I'm not making money. You know, our staff, they're not making money. We're all former coaches, you know, football, basketball, and we're doing this for the love of the profession and to make inroads for the coaches in the state. So, you know, again, to anyone that's listening out there, there's strength in numbers. The more supporters we can get behind the cause, the faster things will be enacted in the state. I guarantee it. And it's proven, you know, it's been proven time and time again. There's strength in numbers. So, you know, anyone listening out there, feel free to visit us, floridacoaches.com. Sign up for the membership. It's free. Get a lot of cool stuff. And visit us on Twitter because that's our number one uh, platform for disseminating information at pay FL coaches. Don't just visit, make sure to follow, turn on those notifications, all that good stuff. Again, we'll also post this on our, our social media and our YouTube as well. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you want to know the links there down below in the description. So uh, from me and Matt, we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. And hopefully we get this pushed through and we get these Florida coaches paid. We will guarantee it. Absolutely. Love it.